weekend, everyone. Kimberly Guilfo along with Juan Williams, Jesse Waters, Dana Perino, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. Immigration negotiations sidetracked by a storm over comments by President Trump yesterday that he now claims weren't accurately reported. The president says the language used by me at the DACA meeting was tough, but this was not the language used. What was really tough was the outlandish proposal made a big setback for DACA. Never said anything derogatory about Haitians other than Haiti is obviously a very poor and troubled country. Never said take them out, made up by Dems. I have a wonderful relationship with Haiti probably should record future meetings. Unfortunately, no trust. Mr. Trump didn't respond to questions today about the incident after a ceremony at the White House. Here's how some of the president's frequent critics reacted to the reports. The president of the United States is racist. We now know that we have in the White House someone who could lead the Ku Klux Klan in the United States of America, somebody who could be the leader of the neo-Nazi and publish just his words. This is someone who's chosen a path that is absolutely racism with steroids. Perhaps the White House feels the president's remarks will be well received in some parts of this country, among some parts of the president's base. And perhaps that is true. But it doesn't make what he said any less ignorant or any less racist. Our president is a clear and present danger to non-white people in America. It's that simple. On the election, though. All right, so obviously some widespread criticism and, of course, people uh, on the left, Jesse, that have disfavor with the president, find that he is racist, then bring his base in to say that the base is also racist and that he shouldn't be um, in the White House, not fit to govern. Yeah, I mean, the left has seized on this, but Trump gave him the weapon. He shouldn't have said it. It wasn't a classy thing to say. It was crude. It was rude. I wouldn't say it, but Trump's offensive. And we've known Trump says offensive things for a very long time. So it shouldn't come as any surprise. He's also issued a denial of it. Jeff. And it's very, yeah, no one knows exactly what was said except him and the people in the room. But putting that aside, the point he was making is that these countries that he was talking about I don't believe our S-hole countries, they're impoverished, they're riddled with corruption, and they have a lot of problems. With that said, he was saying he believes in merit-based immigration. That was, I think, what he was trying to get at, because people in the room were saying, let's do a deal where we bring in these people from third world countries, and the president has made it very clear. He wants to bring in people that are based on merit, whether it's a high education, whether it's English speaking, those are the things that he wants to focus on. And in immigration policy, he's trying to put forth, that's the priority for him. What got lost in his gaffe, I would say, was that people now aren't talking about that. And the deal is really hanging in the balance. And he had a lot of momentum going into this. The tax thing was doing great. He had its great meeting, and he was going to bring together a lot of people on an immigration overhaul. And now all that's been lost, so he needs to do a lot to regain the momentum. I dislike the people on the left who, and I know people and you know people that have, you know, been at cocktail parties. They call the Bronx an asshole. They call middle America an asshole. These people that are in their studios and, they're, and they're, put, yeah, yeah. they're putting people down that live in different parts of the country, they call the South Hicks, they call Christians bad things, people that say bad things. Um, you know, what did Obama say about bitter clingers? Hillary called half the country deplorable people. So the, the reaction in the media when they say Trump says this about another country, there, there have been Democrats that said horrible things about people in our own country and have not gotten criticized nearly as much as the president. So there's a little hypocrisy there. But again, with that said, obviously the president said the wrong thing here and has to do a lot better <laughs> moving forward when it comes to blunt talk. Okay. All right. So, um, Dana, how do you see this in terms of, you know, the, the communications being handled by the White House in response to this? Well, you know, if they wanted to deny it, last night would have been the night to deny it. Um, apparently there were, were reports that there were calls being made is to check in with people that they'd like to talk to and everybody was giving them the thumbs up and then this morning that changed and he said that's actually not what I said so we're actually doing two things now we're having uh, people who are defending the comments but even if he didn't say the comments the comments are okay 
um, meaning that's some of the defenders are saying that. Um, so ag agreeing with what Jesse said in that um, th th it's not exactly surprising that you would have profanity in the White House. This has happened in every White House. Remember in 2000 when um, so, uh, I think it was President Bush at the time a candidate said that one of the New York Times reporters was a major league a-hole. <laughs> really, Dan? And Cheney Gosh, said, please. big time. <laughs> okay, then you have Joe Biden in the yep. White House saying, oh, when he's th about to sign Obamacare, um, you know, Mr. President, this is a big effing deal. Like, profanity is not the issue. Uh, the sentiment is. But I would say that aside from all of that, and I, I don't need to go into how I feel about it, um, the question is, what do you want to accomplish and what do you need to do and who do you need to help you do it? And Senator Dick Durbin is one of those people. And what happened is, this makes it so much harder for, for Dick Durbin to convince his Democrats to go along with him to try to get these deals done. Um, and this is not just about the DACA deal. It's right. about the spending um, and the CHIP money, the Children's Health Insurance Program, because now de there are Democrats on that side that are going to dig in and they're going to say, I'm not going to want to be a part of this. You have to push back harder on President Trump. When what the sad thing is, on Tuesday, they had a really good meeting. Mm -hmm. And by Friday now, I think they're farther apart than they were earlier in the week. And they've got seven days until the next government shutdown. Okay, so Greg, it wasn't uh, fortuitous timing, to say the least. So as Dana points out, it's put Durbin and others in a bit of a, a position. The president is denying that he said this, but the timing of it perhaps um, should have come quickly on the heels yesterday. Uh, where does it go from here, and what do you make of it? Well, Durbin is a bozo. Let's be frank on this one. I mean, this is a guy who said chain migration is a racist term because of the word chain. So let's not forget that. Yeah. The big issue, the thing that really bugs me, it's not fair that all the other networks get to say the word and we, <laughs> and we can't. That's your takeaway. It's like, no, that, this is, it's like when you, you know when you're a kid and one of your friend's parents lets him go see R-rated movies, yeah. but your parents won't? That's Fox News. They won't let us say the word. Actually, they haven't told us. But Fox News is the parent? If Fox News is they're saying, they're, you know what I mean? They're saying, yeah, I yeah, you're, it's, like, it's like, yeah, you shouldn't be saying that. I asked if we could say the word, and they said we couldn't. They so shut that's, you down. They shut, they, yeah, they shut me down. Good to have that big talk that's, here. But there is, a sen <laughs> there is also a sense here. Like, I, I, I don't appreciate the language either. Um, and, in fact, I, actually, when, I, when you hear it, you go, ah, you know, I hope he means the countries and not the people. Well, don't you think that's what it means? I'm, not no, I'm hoping. To the and people, I think, but I'm, I'm Haitians, hoping. But the I'm hoping. Uh, yes, I'm hoping. But that has to be asked if he means the people. He needs to clarify. Did he mean the countries or the? I, I'm hoping he meant the country, and I and he can prove that by just saying merit-based immigration can take people from those s hole countries. I can I think that those countries, like you have to separate these two issues. I can believe that these countries are really bad, but people that come there are really, can be really good. Yep. That's all he has to do, I think. Now, the, um, like I say, I find the word terrible and all that stuff, but I'm not going to be self-righteous about it because when I watch the other, me when I watch the media do it, I just want to. I just can't handle how self-righteous and sanctimonious they are. I mean, these are people that if they went to a gym and there wasn't the right smoothie bar in there, <laughs> they would call that an asshole, especially if they were living in New York City. If, 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 if Equinox, if, if, they, if, they, if, they, if, they, if the gym didn't have a personalized TV in front of their stair climber, that's an asshole. I mean, I, it, it, everybody uses that word. Now, you're right about the sentiment. That's why I think that you have to divide it. But the point is, and then I'll shut up, mm -hmm. it's always going to be about rhetoric versus action. And right now, nothing... Donald Trump has done, in terms of action, has been the problem. In fact, the country's doing really well. We've got high optimism in small business. We've got a crazy stock market. People are getting bonuses. You're seeing Iran, maybe there might be a secular revolution. You're seeing North Korea, things happening. But the issue among the media is always going to be this coarse rhetoric, which we all, I think, admit quite has always been the problem. So right. Donald Trump makes Donald Trump a heavy lift for everybody. Because it's like a, it's like a four-hour drive to Disneyland right when it's closing. You only get an hour of rides. And that's what Trump is. He's a four-hour ride to Disneyland when it's about to, to close. As long as the economy does well and his actions are good, people will accept this heavy lift. But if the economy goes down and there's a, or there's an ugly war or, or something, something bad happens, then it's going to be an issue. But I think people... Are, 
People already know what they got. I know, but right. They know so what they got. Are we gonna get, people Sorry. are getting caught up on the semantics, the semantic gymnastics, you're saying, I you know, disapprove of the language, it's colorful, et cetera. As Dana said, this is nothing new that we've seen in White House, administration, Congress, whatever, every place, workplace. However, Greg brings up one good point, finally, thank God, which was you look, at the, you look at the list, you know, of accomplishments. <laughs> so we're super focused here on the language, but what about the accomplishments? Shouldn't the Democrats be fair and focus on that as well? I think anybody can be fair, but this is not about being fair. The man told a lie this morning that compounded his racial comments yesterday. His own White House didn't deny it. And now he comes out at the last moment after, I guess he's watching Fox and Friends, and sees that even people who are stalwart supporters are saying, hey, this was really un unforgivable. He shouldn't have done this. It's wrong. And then he says, oh, well, I didn't quite say it that way, and I, you know, that language wasn't quite the same. I'm amazed at how many Republicans are put into the difficult position of having to defend President Trump over and over again. I mean, and distracting from the agenda, but maybe it's an intentional distraction, maybe it's a distraction, I don't know. But in this case, he has offended people so deeply, and yet Republicans are in like, well, Paul Ryan today, well, you know, it was wrong, that shouldn't have done, but he won't say, you know what? This is across the line. You can't say this about fellow people in this world, but certainly Americans. How many Haitian Americans, African Americans, El Salvadoran Americans are making a great contribution to this country? People who are hardworking. To Greg's point, this is not about the countries, Greg. It is about the people. No, he you know hasn't clarified that. No, he hasn't clarified that. Allow me to speak. The reason that I say it's about the people is because it was in the course of a discussion about the lottery. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he wants the lottery done away with. He says, why do we need a lottery to get in here? Uh, you shouldn't, it should be, he wants to cut legal immigration in half, but the lottery system he objects to on the basis that it should be about merit. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be about a lottery. Right, right. The lottery was point. created, however, mm -hmm. because there is a shortage of people coming from certain countries in the normal flow. Mm -hmm. So the idea was we're going to try to engineer it so as to repair that and create opportunities for people from all over the world as American immigrants. Which can immigrants. be done on merit. He then, yes, that's says, right. he then comes back and says, mm -hmm. oh, no, we don't want people from those countries. That's about people, Greg. And to say that, to oh, imagine what you would say to the Irish, the, the Irish coming from famine, the I Jews get, coming from Germany, I the Italians. It. But they uh, want that's to come what here he's saying now, and he's doing saying it well. about people like of Haiti. color if he says, and comparing them if, to Norwegians. The, we, if well, he we'll says that meritocracy, Ameri meritocracy yeah. based immigration allows people from those countries in, it's fine. But if he says it doesn't, then you're right, but we don't know that well, yet. Well, it would be contrary to what we say on the Statue of Liberty. It doesn't say yeah. we'll take your brightest and richest. It says we'll take people. So you're who against have the whole oppressed. meritocracy thing? No, no, no. You know, let's have a discussion. We're but trying. What I'm saying is, <laughs> what he said yesterday was so deeply wow. offensive and wrong. And I can't believe that Republicans and even Trump people should be up in arms. He somehow suggested, oh, his people would agree to this? They're not all racist. I think no. they understand that he is your rude, rich uncle. Well, he's using <laughs> yeah, colorful language, but nevertheless, when you look at the merits of what he's talking about, it should be a merit-based system. There are serious, significant problems with chain migration. So language aside, those issues have to be dealt with in a responsible way. The privacy security debate front and center again on Capitol Hill as the Senate now takes on the new FISA bill next. A bill to extend the NSA's authority to conduct foreign surveillance on U.S. soil passed easily in the House yesterday. Now the Senate is considering the measure. FISA supporters see the act as a vital tool to stop terrorism. If we had it before 9-11, likely we would have detected what they were doing. We would have had the full authority to monitor, their, to track their phone calls and also to surveil their phone calls. In other words, listen to them. Mm -hmm. We've had it since. It makes all the sense in the world. It absolutely is critical if we're going to give our intelligence agency, and particular, particularly the National Security Agency, the ability to monitor terrorist phone calls. But privacy advocates like Rand Paul are concerned about Americans getting caught up in warrantless spying. 
What we have is a program called the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, and you're supposed to be, or the grant of power, is to spy on foreigners in foreign lands. I'm all for that. We need to protect our country. Millions of Americans are recorded in there. So if the president calls a European leader or the Russian leader, the Chinese leader, the president's phone call is recorded in this, believe it or not. So there are a lot of innocent people who are in here, and it should not be searched for American data without a warrant. All we're asking is go to a judge and uh, have some evidence to get started. Warrants aren't that difficult to get. The senators threatened to filibuster, but he can't. Mitch McConnell set up a parliamentary path to block him next week. So it looks like it's going to pass. Greg, is that good or bad? Yeah, it's good. I think it's good. But, you know, I love spying. Uh, you can't connect the dots without the dots. And if you don't think we need dots, then you're dotists. You probably hate people with freckles. Fact is, the least secure countries in the world are also the least free. And I know this is where I lose all my libertarian cr uh, credentials. I don't care. I'll take the heat. Uh, <laughs> but you can, heat. I love you heat. I love heat. heat. But, there you go. but freedom and security are not polar. They're, they're not these things in conflict. They're actually like spouses that enhance each other. And, and, and you cannot be the freest country, the most beloved country in the world, the country everybody wants to go to without being the most secure. You have to have that. And th there's a way to do that and still be even more free. The problem is we get stuck in this weird argument. It's, it's, a, it's an argument that existed before technology and terror, which mm -hmm. is that security somehow, uh, uh, um, freedom, uh, it impinges on freedom. It doesn't. It enhances it. If this passes, Jesse, uh, it, it's for a six-year reauthorization, so we might not ever have to talk about it again if we're, unless we're, we might still be on air. Well, thank God. Uh, <laughs> some of us. Uh, wow. uh, the Bush administration on yourself again? <laughs> did a few things wrong, but one of the things they got right were these tools they put in place to track down terrorists. Enhanced interrogation, black sites were incredible tools that they put in place after 9-11. But I think the FISA courts and the warrantless surveillance was the best thing they did. It stopped over 50 to 60 plots. Some plots were targeting the New York City subway, the New York Stock Exchange. They identified the Mumbai bomb from this. Yep. They can track down cyber threats. So I think this is fine. What I, right now, I think we're surveilling 100,000 foreigners overseas. Sometimes those foreigners call here, and they may or may not talk to an American. Now, that automatically gets picked up. It doesn't get read, but it gets stored. And sometimes you need to look into the American phone call or email quickly. And the argument against Rand Paul is that you don't have time if there's a ticking time bomb situation, or like Kimberly knows, if you're really trying to go after these people hardcore, you don't have time to go to a judge and get a warrant. Mm -hmm. And that's the argument. And you can always go backwards. But if you're going to lean forwards on the war on terror, this is incredibly crucial. And he's not going to be able to, to do the um, filibuster, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Kimberly, um, there's been no successful challenge to this, I don't think, from a privacy perspective in the courts. Is that right? Yes, because when you think about it, what's being weighed in the balance in terms of national security or dealing with terrorism or dealing with exigent circumstances where time is of the essence, quick response team has to be able to get that and narrow it down. And we saw things like this in terms of member San Bernardino and the terrorists there and tried to be able to track them and track them through their cell phones immediately, through direct messaging or other... Um, you know, encryption. It's really a battle against these really um, well-defined and pretty sophisticated means of communication that we have now today with Telegraph and Signal and Cyberdust and WhatsApp that have the end-to-end -end encryption, and then also trying to balance that with trying to work cooperatively with some of these um, phone providers and things of that nature, like uh, we saw Apple push back and try to protect their users and not let you have the information. But I understand from a prosecutor's perspective of wanting to get that. I don't think anybody's trying to go and try to abuse. And I mean, as weird as Greg is, do we really want to hear what he's doing with, with his phone? No. <laughs> You'd be right lucky side. if you knew, Kimberly. <laughs> People who support this, that in, intelligence and law enforcement, want say that there are protections for Americans embedded in this, but mm -hmm. it seems like it's never enough for the ones that have privacy concerns. Well, the number one person is Donald Trump. Uh, yesterday, he did a total flip-flop, right, initially tweeting that he was opposed to the extension of this law and apparently looking at his own circumstance and saying, oh, maybe some of the Trump campaign people got caught up when America was, guess what? tapping phones in Russia and heard some of his campaigning. So he said, oh, no, no, this is a terrible thing. And then he gets into whether it's unmasking that's involved, because as Jesse just explained to you, sometimes 
American agents have to look and see what was said, especially if they identify a potential threat. If it's a number then, match. Right. And then, he's, and then Donald Trump apparently was then pressured by Paul Ryan and others who said, hey, wait a second. Don't forget we're trying to protect the country. This is about something bigger than you. It's about the terrorist threat. Uh, and you see people from across the political spectrum saying this is important. But when you come back to it, it's what Donald Trump's initial objection was. I think Judge Napolitano on our own network has said this as much, that it opens the door to people getting caught up, American citizens, yeah. in this wider net. So you get people like Rand Paul, uh, you know, Mike Lee, Justin Amash, others, these are all saying, hey, wait a second, let's put in some of these protections. But right now, I think people are so worried that the protections could limit the yeah. capacity of yeah. our agents that they're not willing to do it. But I, to me, the story here at this point, there's such support for the bill, is Donald Trump. Well, but uh, it is going to pass, and he says he's going to sign it, so we might actually have bipartisanship Boo. next week. All right, one celebrity takes on another for an insensitive tweet following the California mudslides. Next. I met a girl, she made me smile, she made me wait, she crossed the street. You've seen the heartbreaking pictures of the California mudslides. It's devastating out west. At least 17 dead, people missing, hundreds of homes destroyed, many roads still closed. And apparently one actress didn't watch the news because she didn't know what was affecting her commute. Bella Thorne tweeted, quote, F you 101 to Santa Barbara. I'm missing my boyfriend's first date on his tour, end quote. Well, that tweet didn't sit well with fellow actor Rob Lowe. He fired back on social media, quote, this attitude is why people hate celebrities. Hollywood, Bella. I'm sorry you were mm. inconvenienced. Mm -hmm. We will try to move out our dead quicker, end quote. Gee, that prompted Thorne to delete her original tweet. She then posted another one, quote, expletive. Just caught up on some news, had no idea why the 101 was shut down. Get home to your family safe. Well, the man who hates Hollywood on this show, Greg Gutfeld. Um, I, I get what Rob Lowe, why he was upset, but... We're all, we've all been guilty of this, and it's like, you know, she's a young person. Young people make mistakes. I imagine if Instagram or Twitter around when Rob Lowe was young, <laughs> he might have had a few problems, if you know what I mean. Look, uh, I'm sure he would have Snapchatted. <laughs> yeah, yes, he would have Snapchatted instead. <laughs> My point is this, uh, you know, or if she made a mistake, I, I, I human beings have a hard time uh, thinking globally when something is happening to them. For example, you, there are studies on this. If you have a hangnail, you will think about that hangnail. You won't think about a boat capsizing, you know, off the coast of Libya, that you'll be thinking about that. I went through the same. I was on a train ride with my wife. We were going to from the U.K., uh, uh, London to Birmingham in the U.K., and the train got stuck for three hours because somebody had jumped in front of it. Mm. And, you know, Everybody, uh, the only thing that people are thinking about, they're not thinking about that guy or the family of the guy. They're thinking about, are we going to miss this important doctor's appointment? Are we going to be able to get there for the audition? Mm -hmm. That's how humans think. It's a, it's a flaw. It's part of natural selection to think about ourselves. And, and that's why I, I'm, I can't believe I'm actually defending <laughs> a, a shallow, and superficial using idea. And Darwin to do it. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Thing. I'll shut up now. So I'll take the other point of view, which is Rob Lowe identified her as a very self-involved actress, yep. uh, all concerned about her boyfriend, but showing a tremendous lack of understanding about or empathy for people who were suffering as a result of these months left. You're saying that Rob Lowe showed a lack of empathy no, or she, she did? did? Yeah, That's okay, what well, he said that yes, she but said. I guess she's saying that she had no idea what was going on. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's obvious, I, mean, I don't know, take her at her word that perhaps it was an innocent mistake. She tried to, perhaps she could have been more um, artful or eloquent in making kind of an apology or saying she didn't realize it. But he's mad because he thought she did know, and she's like, uh oh, I didn't know. And so now here, here we are. So then don't tweet. Regret Island. <laughs> right, so, More so contestants for Regret Island. Yes. So, and now a word from the boyfriend, the, who, whose name From's is Mod's son, a rapper, right? And he says, what, what was that one? Mod's son? Is that my wrong? I have no idea. Oh, oh, okay. I figured you knew the music. No, I yeah, okay. I don't oh, you, you figured Jesse's into rap. But, yeah, I don't, he probably Actually, is. Yeah. Not uh, your stuff, God felt. <laughs> Yeah, not but, so like he death, says Rob Lowe was guilty of bullying Bella Thorne. Yeah, so he's dragging Rob Lowe through the mud. 
Um, so here's what I think nope. about it. As no long as you're intended. making confessions about yes. having Bella Thorne moments, I will probably shouldn't, but I'm going to make my own confession. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Waters we're, we're World, back on Regret Island. the yeah. weekend show, was supposed to debut about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And we had taped the show, and we had it all ready to go. And then ISIS attacked Paris. And they had to bump my show. You and I'm thinking, mad? God, you know, they bumped my premiere and... Then I'm realizing, wait, a lot of people died in Paris, and that was really selfish. But the difference was, I didn't tweet about it. Good. And that's what you have to do. It's also funny that Rob Lowe's now the voice of reason in Hollywood. Yeah. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually agree with President Obama. President Obama was on the Letterman thing the other day, and he said this. My presidency will be like a speck in history. Mm. It's just a speck. It's a small little moment in time. And that's what people don't understand. They're so self-consumed in their own little world that they don't see the big picture in the world around mm. them. Wow. Well, Regret Island. Well, one way populace. to deal with this is, is to set yourself up, to sign up for a local news alert on your phone, and then, you know, mm. then you'll know solution. what's going on. Solution. And it's got the solution. Um, I also think at least she didn't actually target, like, the highway workers or a specific company, because this is one of the worst trends on Twitter. When yes. popular or influential people that have a lot of followers use Twitter as a way to shame a company mm -hmm. and to try to get special favors for something that maybe happened to them that happens to every other person. Right. And even if it looks like they're trying to do it to try to help the overall thing, I think it makes people look very small. I, and those so are the I would worst say, tweets on the planet. Wait, yeah. don't you do that? No, I've never. No. I did yes, do. Me. When no. you're flying, I thought you. No, did I, it all the I time. attack people. Oh, okay. I don't attack no, but, companies. No, it, it, I mean, you you do have this instinct because you're in the moment and you're mad. Yeah. And you're like, you know what? You know, airline, I'm about to do. I'm yeah. about to yeah. light up your world. But I would say, check yourself before you tweet yourself. Do you know, nice. what, oh, do you know what the cops once told me about tra tra traffic accidents? Most of them are caused by people who think. This traffic is going too slowly, and I need to get where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And then they just... They're not courteous. Oh, David Brooks just wrote about that. Yeah, the Pope even has just said about this. Anyway, Pope. don't Pope. move. Fast as seven. Delightful. Up next. Welcome back. Time for... Oh, boy. The fastest seven minutes in television. Three stories, seven minutes. Let's go. First up, one of the biggest scandals in sports history brought to life again in the new film, I, Tanya. Nancy Kerrigan clubbed in the knee in 1994, right before the Olympics, in a plot drummed up by the ex-husband of her competitor, Tanya Harding. Harding, now making the rounds to promote the film. The disgraced figure skater wants the world to believe she's the real victim. Maybe it suits you to play the victim, but I think the victim in all this wasn't you. It was Nancy Kerrigan, who had her Olympic dream and shattered we, quite literally I, in her legs. I, I mean, believe that we all... Thank you so much. I appreciate being on your show, but I think I'm going to have to say have a good night. You're, you're going to end the interview because I think that Nancy Kerrigan was the victim here, not you. You weren't letting me finish. I think that... Many people are the victims of abuse every single day. Wow. A reporter caught up with Kerrigan, and she says, quote, I was the victim. That's my role in this whole thing. That's it. I mean, really? I feel sorry for Nancy Kerrigan, especially after the Golden Globes. What I really thought was they had... They had what's her face there at the awards. Tanya. So and so you have celebrities lecturing us on you know never blaming victims, and they have probably an alleged perpetrator who who attacked a woman or or, or mm -hmm. uh, allowed that to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what stunned me was apparently she wanted to charge journalists twenty five thousand bucks if you asked about Nancy Kerrigan. It's oh, wow. ridiculous. Wow, it's a lot of money. Nancy Even Kerrigan is the victim, and this woman should have had better media training before she went out and did her press tour. Kimberly. Oh, if you're going to good night somebody, then you better good night them. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's, that's no right. Kevin Yeah. All right. Time's up. Next up, David Letterman's back with a new series on Netflix. You might have noticed he doesn't use a razor anymore. First guest, Barack Obama. One of the biggest challenges we have to our democracy is the degree to which we don't share a common baseline of facts. What the Russians exploited, but it was already here, is we are 
operating in completely different information universes. If you watch Fox News, you are living on a different planet <laughs> than you are if you, you know, listen to NPR. Okay, cheap shot. Um, do you miss him? No, this is what I would say. If, Jesse, if you're going to helm Fast as 7, yeah. you cannot choose a Barack Obama quote <laughs> for the thing because it takes up all the time. You can drive a truck through that pause. What about you? Who's homeless Santa? <laughs> oh, you mean Letterman? You know, this whole, like, I am retired and I'm growing a big white beard thing, it started, I, like, like the, the whole, like, the, the, Michael Stipe from R.E.M., same thing. It's like, it's this thing, it's like, I no longer have to look good, but it's actually very conspicuous. It's basically saying, I'm so successful, I can look like homeless Santa. Hmm. You relate to that? I'd do that, but I can't grow a beard. I can relate <laughs> to that, <laughs> yes. I, I find it terrifying. I don't know what <laughs> Letterman's doing and what's <laughs> going on in there, and I don't know. Um... But, you know, it was an interesting interview enough, I guess. It was. I mean, I don't Let him know. Know. The board out of his worthy mind. Worthy of fastest seven. Beard's great. <laughs> Lowest ten, okay. maybe. All right. <laughs> you know, oh, stop attacking the producers, the producer. Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I didn't get that there was much meat to it, except I read <laughs> that he said he explained his dance moves to Letterman. And his mom dance moves. So I guess that's like his mom jeans. Well, but now like those mom... very high waisted mom jeans that were oh, sort of like we acid go. washy. Or By the way, the yeah. one takeaway, I'm sorry, was when the audience applauded before he finished his sentence because they heard Fox News. He was saying Fox News and NPR, but they applauded before they got to NPR because they were trained to think that way. That's right, like lemmings. Finally, this video has been viewed more than 50 million times. We showed it to you earlier this week. A man trying to get in the car to go to work gets taken down by the driveway beneath him. <laughs> it was covered by a sheet of ice. He's okay and laughing about it along with the rest of us today. Your wife, when you came inside after fall falling, the first thing she said was, let's look at that video, right, <laughs> on the security cam. So Correct. Not how am I. Just yeah. <laughs> check the video. It's just funny. I laugh every time. I'm laughing now. Watching. I got a round of applause yesterday when I went to work. Um, it's just, yeah, it's surreal. I don't even know how to describe this. You know, the people reaching out to my wife and myself saying it made their day. That's, All right. that's been the best part of it. 50 million views, Greg, and he doesn't get paid for any of that. All right. I, I studied the wrong video when I saw the fact. I, I thought it was the car during the storm going Wait, down in we, the mud. We had this on the show already. You know that, right? I know, but that's why I didn't think we were doing this. I thought it was oh a car well, in, it's the first in the mud slide. Well, it's the prepared. Yes. Okay. What about you? You just out I yourself. just am I'm so glad that he fell before he ran into the road where he could have been hit by a car. Oh, Danny, you know what, so sweet. You know what strikes me is a security injury. video. Every embarrassing moment in your mm -hmm. life now is chronicle for all time. I mean, Also gosh. when you're on the five. But your wife, <laughs> his wife, my gosh, boy, she literally loves him, huh? Kimberly, you've never <laughs> fallen like that? No. No, <laughs> never slipped up once. No videos of me like that. No videos. <laughs> There's some good videos, but none, none of that. those. <laughs> okay, Facebook Friday when the five returns. <laughs> okay. Very healthy drink, Coca-Cola. Facebook Friday, we have your questions. I have it from breakfast. You should try it, too. This is a great question from Adana F. What's the first thing you do when you get home from work? Kimberly? Don't look at me. What? <laughs> I was looking down. You I know, I can tell. You don't social cues very well. I was, I'm the opposite of social cue expert. <sighs> I really, I, it depends. It depends. Yeah. Yes. Usually you try to wake me up. Who I, <laughs> what a freak. <laughs> tell you she something. calls me and she says, are you home? You're on oh. Regret Island, not Fantasy <laughs> Island, buddy. Um, oh. Nicely done. Yeah, indeed. Nice it nice. depends on who I'm with. Let's say that. Oh, Juan, first thing you do. Well, I, I think the question might be headed in a different direction, but I'll tell you, the, literally, the okay. first thing I do is I wash off all this makeup. That's true. <laughs> oh, my wife goes nuts, because if I, if I forget that, and it's all over the pillowcases, oh, yes, it's like the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> <laughs> I just take off all my clothes. <laughs> no. No, I mean, no. I mean, because I just take off my suit, Gutfeld. Oh, no. All right? I take off my suit. <laughs> And then I DVR'd the five, and then I just watch myself. So you watch yourself watch myself naked? You get myself. before you watch yourself? He yes. watches himself so naked. comfortable. 
That's what he does. No. That's what he does. Yeah, you do. You just it's said disgusting. it. Disgusting. Get your mind out of your gut. Right. So you find yourself disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there geez. Yes. Um, Dana. Downhill. I say hello to Peter and Jasper, and then I, I do take my makeup off. Mm -hmm. That's good. Put my hair in a ponytail. <laughs> do you really? Absolutely. God, I so don't do that. <laughs> I mean, I just don't. I, the first thing I do I is stay like I, this. I unhook Stephen from the uh, basement yeah, chain. Nice oh, of okay. you. Yeah, it's yeah. been a long yeah. time. Yeah. Yes. What happened to Dobbs? I, I, well, Dobbs <laughs> doesn't talk to me anymore. Joanne D, this is a great question, an excellent question. Think about this one. Joanne D asked, "Would you rather travel back in time oh, no. to meet your ancestors?" Or to the future to meet your descendants, and why? Well, that's easy for me. What would? Well, I don't have any descendants, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go back in time. But I would love, 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 love to go back in time and see my family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if they're jerks? That's well, what... that's okay. Yeah. They probably are. You know, people in way back then, they were definitely I would like to go and talk to them jerky. about their decision to, to oh, emigrate God. to America. Oh, yeah. good question, Jesse. Well, the Waters family comes from a very long line of prestigious and noblemen. Um, from, Naked people. Yes, from Norway. <laughs> Supercilious <laughs> Norwegian. Go, yes, I'd go back, obviously. You'd go back, too? Yeah, I'd go back. I'd go back. Mm. I, I think just going back, Juan, uh, I'd be disappointed. Everybody would be disappointed because, you know, they don't, you know, they're not up on the latest trends, hygiene-wise. <laughs> Oh, Let's face it, the 1700s sneakers. was a smelly period. Yeah, kind of like what President Trump might call a... No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the entire yeah. Middle Ages oh, was yeah, an yeah. asshole. <laughs> All those people who are coming over here, not acceptable. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I would go forward because, yes. you know, so I love history. So I, like, I always am curious. And, you know, being a black American, I, there's huge holes going yeah. back. So I could fill in a lot of holes. Mm. But going S -holes. forward, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not that one. But going, no, I mean yeah, it was a play like play on right words. Into that one, one but, go, but going forward, I think it would be. I mean, one of the questions I have in my mind as I get older is, you know, will I see my grandchildren like mm -hmm. graduate, get married, stuff like that? I'd love. Yes, to. you will. He you wants will. to see all the, uh, the pictures so he can post them. Uh, yeah. No, no, you know, I'm going to send more them thing. to Greg. <laughs> Kimberly, would you rather go? In the Flintstones direction or the Jetsons direction? Mm. Hmm. Backwards or forwards? I actually, I would probably want to go backwards, believe it or not. I think so. I would be a little bit torn about it, uh, you know, because mm. it would be good to go back, depending how far you could go back. But then I would also probably like to, you know, see the I'm, descendants of I, my son. This question is irrelevant to me because I will be living forever. My brain in a vat of nutrients. That's how it's going to be. I'll be there. Okay, well, perfect Disney. world, no body, just my brain in a vat. Perfect. Smiling. No mouth. No mouth. No Excellent. smiling. <laughs> I'll no be thinking mouth. about smiling. You know what makes me smile? One more thing. Oh, Transition. Perfect. Transition. <laughs> One more thing. Kimberly, you go first. Thanks. Sure. All right. So this is a very cute story. Danny, you're going to love it. Got, because I'm it's a attention. very nice, happy ending for a sweet dog. And this is a dog that's uh, a Pyrenees in Seminole, Oklahoma. Kathleen is a six-year-old. Look at her. So cute. Great Aww. Pyrenees mix. And when her owners moved and couldn't keep her, they gave her to someone who lived in another town about 20 miles away. She missed her old family. So not once, but twice, she walked 20 miles back home in search of them to try to find them Aww. to be reunited. The Seminole Humane Society to control and work to find her a new home. We have very good news. Do there was like tons of applications her? all across the country. Like and her? today, she has been adopted and will be moving to Texas to be with her new forever family. Isn't that so sweet? And she's eating a little cheeseburger. So Who doesn't want to eat a cheeseburger? Can you imagine? I kind of feel sad she couldn't be with that family. But nevertheless, thank you, Texas family. Great state of Texas. Peter had a dog in his life that did that well. All right. So Enough about dogs, okay? Saturday. Greg Gutfeld Show, 10 p.m. I got Pete Hex, if you know him. Comedian Allie Breen, she's hilarious. Cat Tamp, you know her. And of course, Tyrus. Now it's time for something very important. Greg's doppelganger news. That's a, a foreign word for double. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at Fluffy McPawpaw over here has uh, uh, happily met her double <laughs> and they got along quite well until she realized that her double is dead and stuffed. Oh. This is a terrible prank to play on Fluffy McPawpaw. <laughs> uh, now she'll be in therapy for the remaining nine lives. Okay, so no dog stories, but like weird cat stories with a fake cat. Exactly. Cool. You figured me out. Yes, I'm <laughs> on to you. Juan. Oh, well, talk about hate.